Hi, we are going to do coordinate covalent bonds in Lewis dot structures. Now a little side note on this. You have maybe seen a method for doing Lewis dot structures where you count total number of valence electrons and how many bonds you need, um, and then you just kind of fit all of the bonds among pairs where you need to put them. Um, that is great. If you like that method, that's not what I do. I do not do the counting method. Um, so watch Count Academy. There's some wonderful YouTube videos on how to count to do Lewis dot structures. Um, coordinate covalent bonds, um, they're this unique bond where um, one of the atoms, it will share a lone pair. It will share two electrons to create a bond. Um, if you look up the definition, it's a two electron bond where two electrons are derived from one atom. And I'll, I'll show you what that means. Um, I like my students to know where the electrons are coming from, and that's why we don't do the counting method. And some of it's just my preference. I don't like the counting method. Um, so I'm going to teach you coordinate covalent, but if you do the counting method, you really don't have to know this. Okay, so if you like the counting method, turn off the video. Um, if you want to understand coordinate covalence, you're going to um, walk away and go, oh, I get it. Okay, so best way to show you this is just jump in and do it. Sulfur has six valence electrons and oxygen has six valence electrons. And I make a note that we have two of the oxygen. So on this, they have the same number of valence electrons, which one's going to be my central atom. It'll be the one that's by itself. And honestly, some of this is just from doing experience. Um, so we have sulfur. This is going to be my central atom. Um, so here's my first thought. I'm going to give one oxygen what it needs. I know that it needs two valence electrons, so I'm just going to do a double bond. I'm going to take those two electrons right there, and we're going to share them with one oxygen to make a double bond. So this oxygen has six valence electrons, the one, two, three, four, five, six, it shares, and so now it senses two, four, six, eight. Good, yay, one oxygen is taken care of. Now here's the issue, let's check the sulfur. Sulfur had the six valence electrons, it shared one here and one there, so it was one, two, three, four, five, six, six valence electrons. But now by sharing, it senses two, four, six, eight we're at an octet. And I still have one more oxygen that has to share. Okay, so how do we do this? It's the coordinate covalent bond. I have one more oxygen, it needs two electrons. So what happens is this oxygen moves in and I'm going to personify it. We're going to pretend that this is alive, okay? The oxygen says, hey, let's share, right? Lewis dot structures, covalent bonding, let's share electrons but I won't give you anything. So this sulfur shares both of its electrons. That lone pair becomes the two electrons in the bond. Now look what happens. The oxygen didn't give any in the sharing. So he said, and sometimes you have friends like this, hey, let's share, let's go to lunch together and they want you to pay for them. You know how this works. The oxygen says, hey, let's share, but I won't give you anything. So the oxygen shares its two electrons the oxygen didn't give any electrons. The oxygen still has its six valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, let's check everything. So the oxygen senses two, four, six, eight, an octet. The sulfur, it didn't take any electrons in sharing. It gave both of the electrons. So the sulfur senses two, four, six, eight. Everything has an octet. Everything has an octet. Um, now, there's a summary video. You can watch it. Um, there's great stability in the octet. Always, always, always try and do an octet for everything um, just by using regular means. If you cannot get an octet by just regular sharing of electrons, then stretch and see if you can do a coordinate covalent bond, because then it means you'll still be able to maintain that octet. Um, okay, this, as a little side note, is a resonance structure. I'm not going to write it as a resonance structure right now. You can watch that video, but I wanted to point that out. Don't be confused, that is a resonance structure. You can watch that other video. Okay, I wanna do this several more times because I know this can be tricky. Oh, another thing I wanna share with you. The most common atoms to do coordinate covalent bonds are oxygen and sulfur. It's our group 16 because they only need two electrons. 
So it's really easy for them to move in and say, hey, will you share and I won't give you anything because they only need a lone pair to have the stability of a full octet. So often sulfur and oxygen, that group 16, you'll see coordinate covalent bonds. Again, only do coordinate covalent if you cannot get a regular octet using all other means. Okay, let's do a cyanide ion. So carbon has four valence electrons, nitrogen has five valence electrons. Um, so let's start sharing, let's start sharing. Oh, do you know what? This doesn't have a coordinate covalent bond. Never mind. we won't do that one. That's just a really easy, okay, fast bonus. You get a bonus regular octet, here we go. Uh, carbon will share three electrons. Nitrogen will share three electrons. The nitrogen, um, so it shared three electrons, has a total of five valence electrons, so there's the four and five. Um, check it out, nitrogen says it's two, four, six, eight. Carbon, two, four, six, and it shared one, two, three. There's one valence electron, so it only senses two, four, six, seven electrons. The negative comes in, woohoo, right there, and you have cyanide. Sorry about that. That is not a coordinate covalent bond. <laughs> All right, carbon monoxide. Here we go. Carbon has four valence electrons. Oxygen has six valence electrons. Okay, let's start by giving oxygen what it needs to get a full octet. So we've got our carbon. Let's share two electrons. Okay, so carbon shared two electrons. One, two. That means that it has two electrons left over, one, two, three, four, from its valence electrons. Oxygen shared two electrons, one, two, had six elect uh, valence electrons, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six. So it has the two lone pairs right there. Okay, let's check them at this point. Oxygen senses two, four, six, eight. Great, it's full, but carbon only senses two, four, five, six. It needs two more electrons. So here's what it does. It says, hey, oxygen, Will you share? But I won't give you anything. So this oxygen does a coordinate covalent bond. It takes those two electrons and it shares them like that. So oxygen still senses two, four, six, eight, because it didn't take any more electrons from the carbon. And the carbon, let's make this into a lone pair. It senses two, four, six, eight. What I like about this carbon monoxide example is that it shows the third bond was the coordinate covalent bond. Carbon monoxide is a common Lewis dot structure that you'll see, and you have to know coordinate covalent um, to really understand. I might make this symmetrical, just put those dots over here. I know that was a little OCD. Uh, it's a common question that you'll be asked, and you have to understand coordinate covalent to get the correct Lewis dot structure. Okay, so these two electrons were shared from carbon, but those two electrons both came from oxygen. The beauty of this, oxygen didn't take any more electrons from carbon, so it didn't break an octet, and oxygen didn't have anything else to give, and so it gave oxygen or carbon what it needed for the full octet. Okay, one more. Let's do, this is perchlorate, a perchlorate ion. Okay, we've got chlorine, one, two, three, four, four, five, six, seven valence electrons. Oxygen has six valence electrons, and we've got four oxygens. Now, rule of thumb, it's um, not a perfect rule, but it's a pretty good, like, quick, dirty rule. You usually put the atom with the fewest electrons as a central atom. Well, I've got four oxygens, so which oxygen do we choose? Actually, the chlorine on this one's going to be the central atom. And I'm sorry to repeat myself, but this does come from practice. This does come from practice. Let's put chlorine as our central atom, okay? Now, every oxygen needs two electrons. If I started doing double bonds like this with the, um, actually, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, with the, um, with the chlorine, look at the chlorine, it's insane. It would sense two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. You can't get to 14, you can't get to 14. Crazy. Now, we want to try and do regular octet. This obviously won't work because we have seven valence electrons. Chlorine only needs one more bond and somehow we have to fit four bonds on this. Number two, if you can't do regular octet, that is when you go to coordinate covalent. 
So I know I can't do regular octet. Let's see if we can do a coordinate covalence. We're going to share the electrons from the chlorine and not require the oxygen to share. So again, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So let's have an oxygen move in and it's going to say, hey, chlorine, will you share, but I won't give you anything. And so those two electrons are going to share with the oxygen. Now, again, the oxygen didn't give anything. It still has its six valence electrons right here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that oxygen senses two, four, six, eight. Yes. Let's do that two more times. Another oxygen will do a coordinate covalent. It won't share anything, but the two electrons from chlorine, that lone pair, it will form the single bond. That oxygen didn't share anything, still has its six valence electrons. So it senses two, four, six, eight. One more, let's do it again. So another oxygen moves in and says, hey, let's share, but I won't give you anything. So those two electrons, that lone pair becomes the bond. The oxygen still had its six valence electrons. It didn't share any. So it senses two, four, six, eight. Now this is an anion. There's an extra electron. So I may put that extra electron right here, which means for the fourth and final oxygen, it can move in and go, hey, chlorine, <laughs> can we share? But I won't give you anything. And so the oxygen is going to move in and the chlorine does a coordinate covalent. Both of those electrons become the bond and the oxygen still had its six valence electrons that it didn't have to share in a bond. So it senses two, four, six, eight. Now here's the beauty of this. Look at chlorine. It has two, four, six, eight an octet. We didn't have to expand the octet. You avoid expanding the octet at any cost. Always try regular octet. If that doesn't work, look to see if you can do a coordinate covalent bond where there's a lone pair that it can share, that an atom can share to the other atom and it doesn't have to donate any electrons. And if you can't do that, that's when you go, okay, expand the octet. Um, now this is an ion, so let's put it in brackets and we'll put that minus sign on the outside. So great work, coordinate covalent. Again, if you cannot get an octet by using regular sharing electrons um, or multiple bonds, single, um, double, triple bonds, um, then see if there's one atom that will move in and say, hey, let's share, but I won't give you anything. And that, um, and an atom will donate both of its electrons for the bond so that you can maintain an octet, right? You're doing so well, good work.